All right, all right. Before y'all get mad with your pitchforks and your crucifixes and your things like that, we know this is late. It's late. We know life is life. Life. Things happen. We Absolutely. know this is late, but we still got to bring y'all episode seven of The Last of Us. What up, everybody? We are the Less Than Stealthy Ninjas. What up? Lou, Around Your Miss, aka yep. the Gore Whore. I'm yep. pointing the wrong way. Around Your Miss, aka the Gore Whore. Yep. And, you know, I understand there's a person missing. Uh, Cosmic Balls, aka King Cordycep, aka King Cordy. Yeah. He's called. You know, he's missing. Uh, he had a he had a recon mission in Jackson. He had to go take care of and unfortunately he couldn't be here for the review. Yeah. So this one is gonna be interesting because I played the parts that surround it, but I never played the LED LC left behind. Oh so when boss comes back for episode eight, he could potentially fill us in on some of the left behind. Okay. But I played the parts surrounding the game, but I never played left behind. Okay. So you know how we do it. We go into it beat by beat. The uh, show opens up with the aftermath of Joe getting stabbed with the bat, which that's a funny thing to say that somebody got stabbed with a bat. It is. Uh, you see that he's pulled into a shack and he's telling Ellie, hey, just just leave me. Just go. Just, just go. Like, if this is it for you, boy, I'm gone. Ellie goes upstairs, and that's when she has the flashback of her time in her uh, QZ. And to 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 sound like our boys James and Fuhad on the Shits and Gig podcast, this was an episode. This is a show. This is a show. I am, you know, it's funny enough because I used to say. To this day, The Last of Us was the most emotionally draining thing I've ever played. This is the most emotionally draining show I've ever watched. I can see that. Because it's 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 torture at this point, especially yeah. for those who played the game. Okay. We're we are glutton for punishment because we know nothing good fucking happens. But we gotta tune in and watch it. But this episode chrono 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 chronalizes Ellie and Riley. Once again, I knew what was gonna happen. I did not. I knew what was gonna happen, but whew. okay, so you start to see Ellie, she was in, you know, QZ, she was a troublemaker, you know. Shout out to uh Bethany getting punched in the face. Fucking <gasps> Bethany. <laughs> Right. Come on, Bethany. That's your Look, you know what was cool about that scene? Ellie was like, fuck your height. Like, yeah. I don't give a damn about you being taller than me. That young lady is quite short. Yes. Well, Ellie wasn't the tallest thing either, if I remember correctly. But I, I do want to say Bella Ramsey is shorter, I think, than what Ellie was portrayed. Or they might have been on the same height. I didn't know she was British. I learned that. I was yes. two days old. Well, we watched Game of Thrones, so that's how we knew. I'm not finished. Don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I still haven't watched House of the Dragon. Shout out to another HBO property. Um, but yeah, so we see that Ellie was a troublemaker and that five you know one. five one? Yeah. That's Bella Ramsey height? Yeah. Ellie might not have been that much taller. In the game, like she might have been about five three ish. So yeah, they might have been almost the same height. But um, we see that Ellie's a troublemaker. She's troubled and that, you know, she has the potential in the world, but she's just causing too much havoc. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop causing all the havoc. Like, chill. And, you know, they was alluding to the fact that she's not coming, she, she's not coming back. Why you want to be like her anyway? which they was referring to Riley, which we will see in a few minutes in the episode. But uh, the, I guess, instructor was like, look at Ellie. You got two choices. You can go down this like path. Person. Huh? I think he was like the principal person. Yeah, like I said, principal, QZ, director, whatever. Like, you know, 
we didn't learn this much about federal people. So, but it was like, look, you got two choices. You can go down option A, which you will be a Bethany, or you can go down option B, which you can be a leader and you can lead Bethany's. Which one you want to go? And of course, Ellie chose the option to lead the Bethany's and we see her in her room chilling, which just to get the foreshadowing, we see that Mortal Kombat 2 poster in her room. We see all these different posters and things. And then we see another young lady sneaking into the room. And we find out that was her old roommate, Riley, who's been missing, what is it, two weeks, three weeks? Did she say? It was, it was, it was like two or three weeks that she did yeah, that. It's been like three weeks. Say, yeah. So. And shout Riley, out to Storm Reed. Huh? Shout out to Storm Reed. Yeah, Reed, shout out to Storm Reed. Phenomenal yeah. Phenomenal little actress. She is. And uh, Storm was Storm. Riley was like, hey, I know I was away. I joined the Fireflies. Now, the funny thing about this scene, they were loud as fuck in that room. They were. <laughs> just loud and talking. That, like, not one time did somebody be like, hey, turn it down. You know, they were loud right. as fuck in that room. But yes, she said that she joined the Fireflies. That's why she's been away. And that she basically not wants to recruit Ellie, but she wants to show Ellie something. Mm -hmm. You know, just come come with your girl and let's, you know, let me show you these wonders. So, you know, sneak missions. Now, part of the sneak wish mission was doing rooftop jumping. Would you made it across all the roofs? You know, I would have been like, <laughs> and I'm gone. <laughs> Now I'm dead or a paraplegic, one or the other. Now, the funny thing was, I was like, I love the way they showed it because at the very end, Ellie was tied. Yeah. But yeah. I would have made it. I would have made it across the rules. It just would have been like, wait, I mean, wait. I've always been fat and, and non athletic. I wouldn't have made that shit. I would have been like, huh? Gravity works, and I would have felt like Betty from Fern Gully. Like, no, 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 no. no. Yeah, gravity works. <laughs> but yes, so basically, she takes Ellie to a mall. Mm -hmm. And Ellie would only, now, once again, just hearing that sounds so wild to like us because it's a mall. Like, we've all been to malls. Like, it's a uh -huh. mall. Yeah. But the fact that she's never been to one. In effect, she's only heard about these. That just lets you know how crazy the world truly got to where right. the generation coming up in this didn't know anything about this stuff. Right. You know, what's a mall? Exactly. You know, you tell somebody, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of stores inside this one building, you know? Right. So they go to the mall. She has it powered up. All these different things. I even love the Victoria's Secret thing. Because while they was walking, which we discussed this before, while they were walking, they were uh, Ellie asked, why were some stores more empty out than others? And Storm's parents, which Riley's parents, <laughs> <laughs> Riley's parents who died, you 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 know they're already gone. Yeah. She tells her that my mom told me when everything broke out, people was taking what they needed and left whatever and then eventually the securities and the guards started to protect places like this because it was like all right now nah, y'all stealing too much and they walked by victoria's secret and everything and they see all the fancy underwear and things like that and they was like well what would you ever need this for <laughs> so cute and innocent so cute right so then um what was the first thing? Was it the photo booth was the first thing or was it something else? Was it the, yeah, it was the photo booth. Then they went to the carousel. Okay, so the photo booth was the first wonder, which that was such a cute moment of, you know, because if anybody who ever did one of them photo booths, it was like, all right, gotta get our poses together. What we gonna do? What we gonna do? So that was a really cute moment. I actually have a strip of, um, that I did at the skating ring with yeah. some girls that I knew when I was little. I actually just looked at those pictures the other day because they're still perfect, you know? And we were like, all right, all right, we're going to stick our tongues out. Ah, you know? <laughs> Do your scary face. 
<laughs> you know, like right. so, it was so cute. So Mrs. Ladybug and I, we had one, I think, when we went to main event. I think we did one and we should still have it somewhere in our place. Should still be there. But yeah, so they did the little photo booth. Yeah. Then they did the little carousel. And you know, once again, it's crazy to know that these are just normal things. We've done these things so much that it's just meh. Yeah. But to right. know that first time, you know. Right. I got so a picture the photo of booth. CJ on the carousel. As a big old, I said, I have a picture of CJ on a carousel in Mobile, Alabama, a big grown man. And I said, I'm taking a picture of you to shame you for the rest of your life for getting on here. <laughs> and I have CJ. a picture of him on there. <laughs> I mean, if you show me the picture, I'll upload it right here. <laughs> <laughs> right here. It just, it just, shame him. It just literally just pop up. 20 you, years old and tall and on the carousel like you this. have your fun cj because that sounds like something tyke b would do too it and does. tyke b is all a six six and i can see six six trying to sit on one of the horses have to probably kick his feet up because they wouldn't be dragging the ground so yeah. i can 100 see that i'm gonna show you the when i find it i'm gonna show it to you you'll see but uh in the third wonder was the third one of the arcade yeah yeah. My wheelhouse. First of all, I want to know how many people, when you heard the noise, was like arcade. Because I was like, oh, it's arcade up there. <laughs> I was excited. The same way. Arcade up there. Now, all the while, there was still a sense of dread for me watching all of this. And of course, you have that sense of dread because you're like, wait, this is in the past. So obviously something happens. Yeah. But you still try to enjoy it. You still try to enjoy the moment because once again, you're trying to live in this innocence and you're trying to think to yourself, this block of time is the first time in their lives where they were probably just like, didn't worry about anything. But that's the closest that they in their lives have been to what our lives have been. Yes. You know, because everything else is just a fuck show. But yes. that particular time in the mall, we can all relate to being in the mall. We can all relate to having a crush. We can all relate to enjoying our youth, regardless of whether you went to arcades or not. Like still just enjoying your youth and wondering why is Victoria's Secret such a thing? Like, oh, that looks uncomfortable as a girl, especially. You're like, ew, ow, mm -hmm. I don't want to wear that in strings, you know, <laughs> so that they did a really good job on that. They did a really good job. And of course, when they turn on the arcade and turn on the lights, we see that there's an infected in a faraway room waking up like, wait, what's happening now? Right. What's that Dirty. sound I'm hearing? Dirty. Quarter. It sounds like fun and I'm the fun police. Exactly. Loser. But they go to the arcade and what does uh, Riley show Ellie? Mortal Kombat 2. And she's like, wait, how are we going to play it? Gotcha. Wow. Bust open the quarter machine. Boy, the nostalgia of putting dollars in that and getting them quarters out. It was like, hey, what? Where did your boy you buy that that was In the smallest bit bent, you was not happening. Right. You, you were like, sit there. <laughs> Come on, nah. Come on, man. Stop it got the tiniest crinkle. You put in it this way, that way, flipping man. it. And you're like, Come on, fam. Right. I'm trying to play Mortal Kombat. You you bullshit. Right. I need to have up next. Like, uh. But she bust open, got a bucket of boy having a bucket of tokens or quarters. Oh my god. Yikes. That's there's no way moms could have gave me enough money to where I would have had a bucket of quarters. I I used to have a bucket of quarters. You're gonna have to come get me at the arcade physically. Have to come drag me. Dave and Buster's, Scoot. I had buckets. You're going to have to drag me out. Keep I didn't have to leave. I was an adult. I was like this. Oh, oh, as an adult? Mrs. Ladybug, you're going to have to drag me out. <laughs> <laughs> there was no one to drag me. I was just there until they closed. <laughs> or I would have closed that bitch down with them. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know what? Speaking of, shout out to Cider K, because Cider K lives at those moments where you ain't got to keep popping in quarters. You can play to your heart's desire. Right? Uh, Planet Tag Ninjas, we need to have another outing. 
Yeah, we do. We need after to we need to hit up Sarah K. After Lent. Yes, because I'm trying to play to my heart's desires for the third time. Actually, no. We need to play Ninja uh -huh. Turtles. Yes, we do. Lip. Lip. Oh, she called you out. Just... But uh, yeah, so they playing Mortal Kombat 2. They was even hitting fatalities. Oh, shout out to Raiden. I almost screamed at my TV yeah. when she hit that fatality with Melina. I was like, ah! And she's like, I'm going to play with Lori Raiden. It's, but yes, they was hitting fatalities. They played with like every character. I was in it. I was like, ain't nothing bad going to happen. <laughs> then, the fourth thing, after they ran out of quarters, um, she gave her a joke book. She gave her No Pun Intended Part 2. And I was like, fuck, something bad is going to happen. <laughs> Once again, of course, you know something bad is going to happen because it's in the past. So what happened was after she gave the joke book, they go into the kitchen and she finds that Riley has been making pipe bombs for the fireflies. And that's when the slight fallout happens. And she was like, no, we was never going to bomb where you was at. And she was like, well, how do you know that? This, that, the third. And Riley was like, look, Ellie, I'm leaving. Like, I'm 17, I'm out. Like, I'm about to just leave. And and she was like, you can come with me, stay, but I'm leaving. Like, I'm leaving, leaving. And Ellie was like, you know what? Right, leave. So she, so she leaves, and she kind of doubles back, and she hears some screaming. So, of course, she's like, oh, no, my friend. And Riley is in kind of like a spirit halloween s type store. And it was like a trap door prop screaming. She was like, yeah, that would have been Wonder 5. And I know it was kind of stupid, but yeah, surprise. And, you know, they made up because the realization was, if this is our last night together, let it be our last night together. Let us, let us have fun. And this is where the fucking show and probably the game really grips those damn emotional strings because you like something bad is gonna happen. I was already crying at this point though. And it was it, it was getting there. It was getting there. It's because the same thing you said about you and Taiki B about him finding his brother. Like mm -hmm. I in seventh grade, shout okay. out to Michelle. I hope you watch this. If you don't, I'm mad at you. Um Michelle and I were friends since seventh grade, and she's little like that compared to my giant ass. Yeah. And um, we used to always hang out and play video games and stuff like that. And I could put myself in, in that shoes all the time. Like mm. if she would have told me that she was leaving, especially like when I think about when we all went off to college and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I was an emotional wreck for like weeks because if the people who left it was just a few of us to stay like it was like Ooh. so if my friend was like you know i'm leaving i thought about you know everybody going off to college and i was so like y'all i almost needed therapy i was so devastated that yeah. my friends were leaving even if they were just going like to the next city i was just like not so i was already crying because i'm just like i can totally relate to those special friendships not as special as Ellie and <laughs> Riley, but well, we'll get that. But yeah, but not. I'm just saying, not as special, but special friendships. You know that you build with your friends, and you love your friends, and those are your ride or dies. And then now they're leaving, and it's like, what? What do you mean you're leaving? Like, and I was already mm -hmm. crying. I was already crying. <laughs> Understandable. Like I said, that whole time with, you know, of course, I put myself in the shoes of myself and Mrs. Ladybug with the whole Joel and Tess thing. I put myself in shoes like that because it would have been like, how the hell? You know, the whole Frank and Bill situation, once again, myself and Mrs. Ladybug, because they was able to find their slice of heaven and was able to just exist until they grew old and died together. Myself with Taiki B, with Joel and Tommy, it's like, fam, I ain't heard from my brother in months. Where's my brother, fam? Right. And then you get that emotional reunion. So 
once again, I'm an emotional wreck throughout this show. This was the first time where I really couldn't put myself in the shoes because, yes, I have childhood friends, but not as strong, like, not from, like, that age. Yeah. You know, See, most I of my childhood that. friends are mainly from, like, high school on, you know, but to be that age, well, I guess you could kind of say me and Boss and me and, uh, shout out to uh, Wendell, I guess you can kind of put us in that boat a little bit, but How not old so much. How Ellie supposed to be? I keep forgetting. If Riley was 17, Ellie was like 13, 14. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I met my friend when I was 11. Oh, yeah. So you definitely put yourself in them shoes. Exactly. And I was just like. <gasps> and then, too, but no, I'm pretty sure what probably made it even worse for you was that they was in a Halloween store, too. So they was in the Halloween store. They had on masks. They was dancing on top of the glass, having fun. You and know, me and playing. my friend. I'm sorry. I know. No, go ahead, go ahead. Michelle, I was just talking to her the other day. That's why I, I can't, I'm just thinking of this. We actually, this is one of the last times I went trick or treating. She and I made our costumes and we went trick or treating. Oh. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So we were dressed up. You know, mad. Oh, so, oh, so, I, so you really put yourself in this? Not. Because, I mean, Michelle, I mean, I know she probably like, don't be telling my business, but she just recently moved away, Mm -hmm. um, like around my birthday last year. And I was like, what you mean? (laughs) And I mean, we've been friends for so many years. I was like, you doing what? I don't like it. You know, so it's just like, this really tugs on my heartstrings because I'm just like, how you doing? How you feel? I and mean, I guess it was opposite. Was it opposite? Because well, I'm not Ellie. I, I would be Riley, I guess, because I'm the black one. And get taller, right? Yeah. So, yeah, technically you would be her Riley. Yeah, but she's actually two weeks older than me, so. But, Whatever. so, we get the sweet, tender moment of them taking off the mask and what was kind of being alluded to throughout the episode, because there was a moment where Riley looked at Ellie very lovingly, mm-hmm. and Ellie kind of kept things moving. Then there was a moment where Ellie looked at Riley very lovingly, and they kept things moving. And it was a moment where they both took off the mask, and Ellie gave a kiss. And, you know, it was like, I, right, y'all suck. <laughs> like, yeah. y'all suck. Like, something in my eye. In and my then eye. it was like, and it was like, and then, of course, and just to like have these moments because like they acted that scene because it was like, I'm sorry. And she was like, why are you apologizing? And she was like, Raleigh, don't go. And Raleigh was like, I, I right. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and then Fun Police shows up. Yeah. You hear the row. And then yeah. Raleigh was like, Raleigh was like, Ellie, get behind me. You know, Raleigh had the blitz. And unfortunately, this was a more advanced, advanced, advanced infected because he had the cordyceps shield oh, on him. So, you know, she 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 trying to give him a couple shots and it wouldn't go down. No. So they basically have a tussle like it was a two on one handicap match and the infected was winning. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say because they was getting pulse flung, slung, everything. And then you know Nelly, Nelly, Ellie took off the took out the knife. Eventually stabbed it in the head and was like, "All right, fam." And then Ellie gets up. Riley comes back and she goes, "Ellie, no." And you like Ellie, no. Once again, you're watching this shit. If we haven't already watched previous episodes, right? We already know. Like- so you see the bite on her wrist, and she's like, "No, no, 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 no." And then she looks over there at Riley. Get around here. And it was like. So, and in the featurette, they also talked about it perfectly. You see how Riley reacted to the the being like, bitch, she was just sitting there. Ellie was raging the fuck out. She was. I actually watched the featurette this time. Yeah. Ellie was raging the fuck out. She was. Now, what I do know about the game, the plan, because they cut it, 
right when they both had the realization that they were both infected and they was like, okay, option A, we get off ourselves. Option B, we could just sit here, become infected, and just, and then, you know, Ellie was like, was there option C? And that broke me. Yeah. That broke me because we knew what option C ended up becoming. Yeah. Well, in the game, from my understanding, the plan was they chose option B to just sit there and both become clickers. I'm not clickers, but infected. Well, one did, the other one did. Exactly. That's now, I don't know if you had to finish Riley or not. That would be something Boss can ask us because if Boss come in next week and say that Ellie had to finish off Riley, I might cry. Right. My nose going to turn red. It's not. Like, I might legitimately cry during recording. Straight up. Just letting you know. Because once again, putting myself in, putting me and Tyke B, if I had to do what Henry did to Sam, just saying. I'm just, I'm going to let you tear my throat out. I mean, and of course, in Ellie's case, it's a little, it would be a little different. Yes. You know, but if my brother, shout out to you, H. Town J, becomes infected, he might as well take my throat out because I'm, I'm never going to sleep again if I have to put him down. Well, same thing with you. Yeah. You and Michelle, yeah, y'all get bit. Michelle didn't turn, but you turn. Michelle would be sad. She would, and she would talk about it forever. She would take something special of mine, and she would make it into a necklace. Like I know her. I know she would. I know now, she would. She'd be like, mm. Do you think she would have offed you, or just left you there? I think it depends. Because I am all and I always have been bigger than Michelle. Like I swear she stopped growing in fourth grade. And like, and as we know, I'm a quite statue, statuesque plus size lady lump. So if she leaves me there, she takes a chance on my big ass being even stronger, and she's so small. Mm. But so I think she would have to think it out, but I think she would be so emotional, she wouldn't really know what to do. She'd be like, oh. Because I, I'm, I've again, I've always been bigger than her. Like I could show you pictures where I'm like, "Yay, look at this tiny person!" I have a theme, don't I, with all my little tiny friends? Well, Ellie did say that wasn't the first person she killed. That is, she did. I thought about that, and I was wondering if you were gonna bring that up. She did say, the "Son of a bitch." Yeah. Damn. That makes me sad. See, see what this show and game do to people. But yeah. after the moment of them realizing they was bitten, life was over, it cuts back to Ellie and was like, nah, fuck this. I ain't losing somebody else. Right. So she does what she needs to do to patch up Joel. Now, the part that surrounds in the video game, the way they do it in the game, after Joel falls off the horse and it goes black, only thing that comes up you see a deer. And this is kind of going into the next episode a little bit too, if you saw the preview to the next episode. Mm -hmm, I did. You see a deer, and now you're playing with Ellie. So you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What is happening? Mm -hmm. So you're playing with Ellie, and you're trying to kill the deer. And I feel like she succeeded, and you realize Joel is in a bad state. And that's when you kind of see the people of the next episode like, hey, this person kind of taking our food and this, that, and the third. And and let's just say this. This is going to be an episode. What Boss and I have been alluding to, David. David. And if everything surrounding David truly happens in this one episode, be prepared to go on a legit emotional roller coaster. I feel like this whole series I've been on an emotional roller coaster. I, I with the exception of Charmed, which is a, a longer spanning series. It was this, like what five, six seasons? Uh seven seasons. Seven? Okay. So, and I mean, of course, I wasn't upset in the last season. Well, 
Nah, that's a lie. I did cry at the last, the very last one. Is that an eight? I can't remember. And then, anyway, um, but for this to be one season so far, I feel like I've cried more than I when I watched Titanic. Oh, like, I know what? this is the most thing I've ever cried on. Like this in is- one season. I mean, because I cried a lot in Charmed, and I realized I was like, oh, it's a lot of parts I cry in Charmed. Still, each time. When it comes to movies, when it comes to TV shows, I don't think, and I'm just thinking, I don't think no TV show. I think the only TV show that ever gave me a little emotional was, of course, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air with the whole Will and his dad thing. Fix your face. Uh, I'm smiling. uh, I see that smile. Fix your face. Um, But not too much things as far as TV movies, yeah. Hell, even a couple of animes made me share some tears. But this right here. Well, here's the thing. Like with Charmed, you have to remember a lot of times they died and either mm. Leo brought them back or something happened. So, of course, you can say, of course, I cried at Prue's funeral because it's Prue's funeral. Yeah. But before then, Piper has died. You know what I'm saying? After then, Phoebe dies a few times. You mm-hmm. know, Cole dies technically twice. Billy Zane dies. Like, like a lot of people die, and you just go. Ugh. I mean, Andy dies. There's so many people that die that you're so attached to, and I just attached to Billy Zane because I am. You know, you be in your room sounding like Tyrese now. What more do you want from me, man? <laughs> And the last, here's the craziest part. And I realize that I cry at this part every time. And I'm like, stop that. We all know that Shannon Doherty left the show forcibly because, you know, she's a jerk. Reform, mm-hmm. allegedly. And and the, and the last episode, when they show like Piper and Leo old and they show the grandkids and stuff, there's mm-hmm. one little brown haired girl that closes the door like Prue used to close the door. It was done. Snap. And I'm like, <laughs> but I know. And it's so simple. The other kids ran in and she just simply does like this. But Prue used to do that all the time. Snap. It's over. And I'm like, but, yeah, uh, <laughs> but just to give a warning, if they do everything with David and his community all in one episode, which is episode eight, because nine is going to be a doozy too. But if they do everything in episode eight, in the words of Scar, be prepared. And that's tomorrow. Be prepared because when I tell you David and his community takes you on a whole whirlwind of emotions and the conversation, I'm going to just give one little hint. The conversation between David and Ellie, which they were kind of hinting at in the uh in the trailer with the whole my people want to kill you and this and the third the conversation in the subsequent boss battle you have one of the most emotional things i've ever played in a video game here we go i'm 100 one of the most emotional things i ever played in a video game and hopefully we'll have boss back next week yes because it's going to be an episode we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna have to get down to the nitty gritty with episode eight. Episode eight and nine, we gonna be getting down to the nitty gritty. Like Fuhad and James said, yes. this is a show. This is a show. Come on. But yeah, um, anything else you want to add? No, it was good. Like I said, I cried. I can totally relate. You know, to having a really close friend. You know that. That's your buddy, and y'all may be kind of outcasty and weird, but that's still your buddy. And since I was talking to her just the other day, mm-hmm. um, I could relate. It hurts my feelings. So I cried. I thought it was good. Again, again, again. Shout out to Storm Reed. I think she's an amazing actress. And what the do that? Can we also give a shout out to Deco Parker, who played Sarah? Can we can we can we give a shout out to these one character? One, one, or not, I mean, Sarah, the daughter, Joe's daughter. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. And we give a shout out to Nico Parker, Storm Reed, and a few others because y'all be in one episode and leave such a fucking mark. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, damn, like, oh. <laughs> At least with Sam and Henry, we had them for two, well, 
we'll fucking shout out to the actors who played Sam and Henry too, because technically they was only in one episode. They just kind of popped up at the end of that one. But you know, we just shout out the fact that you know us black people uh be leaving marks on this show. And I love it. Oh, and we didn't shout out uh Tara. What's her name? Oh, Rutina. Yep. Yes. Like these, these, these one episode characters, boy, be leaving marks and David going, <laughs> but we'll get that. But uh, thank you. Hopefully next week we'll be on schedule and we'll record it Tuesday or Wednesday. Yes. Uh, I probably won't watch it tomorrow because I'll be watching AEW some way, somehow. So shout out to my brother in the tag. But um, so I try to watch it. Monday or Tuesday, depending on how the work day goes. But yeah, I'll probably watch it. I normally watch it like Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, but uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank Let you. us know what y'all think. Let us know you like the episode, hate the episode, you know, all that good stuff. If you hated the episode, then I want to know what kind of emotional robot, or what kind of emotionless robot you are. Yeah. But uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for watching. Like, subscribe, share, all that other good stuff. Shout outs to the Cordyceps King. Yeah. Uh Cosmic Boss, who hopefully should be turning, should, should be returning from Jackson soon. You know what I'm saying? He on his own mission. So yeah. myself, Scooter Lou, wrong Gore Whore, wrong you miss. Thank y'all for tuning in. Until mm-hmm. next week. Keep the Cordyceps away, fam. Peace. Yeah.